what is out of obviously you have some experience with this. So what is <laughs> what is what is the definition of a leader in a business context and what is the most important trait for a leader? Oh wow, okay. So let's go backwards. Um, the most important trait for a leader, from my perspective, is understanding that your role is to enable the success of everyone around you, is to think about a re the reverse organizational chart, where like the leader is on the bottom of the chart, not at the top. Your role is to support and enable the success of all the executives. And the executive's role is to support and enable the success of their managers and manager's role to enable the success of individuals. My role is not to succeed myself. I don't need to succeed myself. I need to enable the different people on my team to succeed. And guess what? Then I succeed. But that's my job is to enable everyone else to succeed around me and do what, whatever is necessary. Sometimes it means letting go of people to enable them to succeed, actually. Um, to me, that is the most important role of a leader. Support the success of those around you. Now, I, I agree with I agree with what the role of the leader is. Um, and I want to I want to understand your opinion about how to do this tactically when there's interests of other parties that are that maybe prompt different decision making. So for example, when you were acquired at Investopedia, obviously uh, stakeholders, there were certain stakeholders that were making that decision because they thought it was for the benefit of those stakeholders or even shareholders. But in a, in a, in a business environment, how do you align that leadership principle, which I agree with, with the expectations of shareholders? For example, or or owners or whatnot, because that's the that's a fundamental thing that I think I always see causing conflict. Everybody agrees what a good leader is, but nobody knows how to do it when they're bored and their owners feel the need to do things differently. For example, that obviously drive ROI or whatever that metric is, right? Good. Okay, so to me, the golden rule is all about transparency, meaning if. I am told by my parent company or by my board, transparently, you're not doing a good enough job. You need to focus on this, not that, et cetera. Or I, or I transmit that information to someone else. It aligns interests in a lot more effective way than if information is withheld. The biggest challenge oftentimes and why there's lots of misalignment like you're referring to, Scott, is because a board will have access to certain information like oh, a company wants to go public or, or whatever the, the, the or we want to sell this company, whatever the, the, the incentive is for the board. And, and the management team or the employees have a completely different incentive. And then there's t tension and, and there's problems because people have missed, have, have, there's asymmetrical access to information. The more that a leader can ensure that there's as consistent information as possible, so that the most junior person and, and the board member knows the same thing, the better. And you could say, oh, David, that's unrealistic. We share all of our financials with every employee. Our board does not know any information that every single employee does not know and get access to. Is there a risk in doing so? Can that employee take screenshots of like our financials and post them on wherever? Reddit, yeah, they can. And there's a risk. But the reward of having alignment and incentives and priorities because you're brutally transparent is you know the way to go and it goes with managing someone you need to be transparent if someone's not doing a great job it's not nice to them not kind to them to like say don't worry keep it up you everything will be okay and then surprise them later on kind of the kindest thing you could do is give very critical transparent maybe overly blunt in order to be clear information in as respectful a way as possible. So transparent to me, see, to me is like the end all be all. This is like, um, this is like radical candor. There you go. That's, like that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it was, at, at, yeah. At our company, we have like a book, we had a book club. Um, yeah. And radical candor was one of the books in the book club. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I have no doubt it was, it's a, it's, it's a great, it's a great leadership philosophy. So, um, and this is what you're doing. This is, this is one of the principles. And, and, how and many, Scott, can like, I just you tell have... you one, one other thing about it? Yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, uh, it's your show, man. You say whatever okay. you want. It's your show, dude. It's not my show, but like, I'm still going to like say it. So go for it. Um, the, there's the, one of the most famous managers leaders ever. In fact, he won um, Time Magazine's manager of the century for the 20th century wow. was Jack Welch, the um, mm -hmm. CEO of GE, General Electric for, for 20 years. At the time that he left the highest market cap company 
um, in the world. He was on IEC's board and I got to sit down with him and meet with him one-on-one. -on -one. And I said to Jack Welch, you were the manager of like the century. What can you teach me about management like on one foot? And he's like, just focus on transparency, focus on trust. If you build transparency, you'll have trust. And if you have trust, you could have anything. Make sure you have trust of your employees, trust of your board, trust of your team. That's all, that's, that's the most important thing. So that had an impact too.